Okay, so we're going to continue our Daf Yomi. We're on Nun Gimel in Avodah Zara. We are in uh, 53a in Avodah Zara. That's the page. So we're discussing. Mishnah said that a pagan uh, uh, can nullify his own idol and the idol of his fellow. But the Jew cannot nullify an idol. And the issue here, the question that we're going to get into as we move on, is can a non-pagan Gentile, a monotheist Gentile, or a pagan Gentile of a different religion, nullify the idol of someone of a different religion? Meaning, can any Gentile nullify the idol of any other Gentile? Gemara says like this, I'm Rabbi Hillel, Brad Rabbi Valas. Rabbi Hillel is on Rabbi Valas. So, first thing that we're discussing, though, is can the Jews' uh, idol be nullified? And the issue that, and the answer that we had is that if a Jew ha- owns an idol in partnership with a Gentile, and Gentile nullifies the idol, and then the, the then the Jews' portion of the idol can also be nullified thus because it's an issue of partnership as opposed to uh, a single owner. So if the Jew has a partnership, then the Jew then the Gentile can nullify the Jew's portion. Kamash Malon Yisrael Akum. However the Jew cannot nullify the portion of the Gentiles portion of the idol. Uh, a Jew cannot nullify idols, um, and it, it's a punishment for such a grave sin, meaning, <laughs> although Gentiles are not allowed to worship idols according to the seven laws of Noah, the rabbis understood that they were totally ignorant of idolatry, of the prohibition of idolatry. It's usually something they were raised with, and so there is a certain level of compassion, which we even see in biblical text as well, in Malachi and so forth. And even in, even in the Torah, Shecholak Lehem could be understood that, that God apportioned the idols to the nations. Can, uh, some people understand that passage to be an expression of religious tolerance uh, in, in, in the practical sense. However, in the theoretical sense, uh, which is generally how Talmudic law operates. Very rarely, uh, when it comes to these type of issues, are we talking in any practicalities, but we're talking perhaps in an ideal situation, but it's really not an ideal situation either because there would be no idolatry in an ideal situation. So it's talking, in general, the legal ramifications is the main thing. that The practicality that we discuss, however, is... The legal ramifications of an idol, if someone can um, can uh, have benefit from an object that was worshipped, you know, should someone be punished? You know, you're allowed. Are you allowed to use the resources, the materials that this idol was made out of, for a different purpose? Um, and that's that's really the discussion that we're going th- we've been going through for the past few weeks, is that's a, and that's a real practical issue. Meaning, once an object's been worshipped, it's prohibited to have any benefit from that item. If it, you know, it, let's say it's made out of gold, can you melt down the gold and, and make coins out of it? And the answer is not unless it was nullified, and and a Jew can n- not nullify. An idol, and a Gentile cannot nullify a Jew's idol. So, if a Jew would worship an idol, then that gold would always be prohibited uh, if it belongs solely to the Jew. However, if there is a partnership between the Jew and the Gentile in the ownership of the idol, then the Gentile can nullify it, but the Jew cannot. So, um, <clears throat> again, hopefully, there shouldn't be any idols, and we should have a, a world where, as the Bible predicts, that the Knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. So, 
so we see that the Jew cannot nullify the Gentiles portion of Alakum the Nafshi Mevatel. The Gentile can nullify the portion that belongs to the to himself. Um uh, there's a discussion here, it seems from the Ramban and others, that still the Gentile can nullify the Jews' portion, as we said before. Um, if, uh, if and only if it's an issue of, of partnership and not an issue of uh, soul propriety. Ekademasna la brisa. So we have a brisa that teaches about this, Rabbi Shimon Manasseh, I remember Rabbi Shimon Manasseh said, Akam shal Yisrael ain la beteloi lamas. A Jew's idol can never be nullified. So if he he took some gold and made a, an, an idol out of it and worshipped it, or even, it would seem even before he worshipped it, remember we were discussing that question. So in any event, that gold has to totally be destroyed and can never be used, and, and the same thing anything else, uh, that any other material... Um, my alamus. But the question is, what does it mean that it can never be nullified? Is there a, is there a, a limit to this term never? So Rehillo Bray the Rebbe Valis Lenitzcha or Sheesh Le Akum Bashutfus. So Rehillo, the son of Rebbe Valis, said this. We only need to teach this in the case where a Gentile and a Jew have a shared partnership in the idol. So what we're what this Bryce is learning is different than what we learned before. That if they have a shared partnership, the Gentile can nullify his portion, but the Jew's portion in the idol still remains prohibited. So in the end... So we said that uh, the whole question here as to whether or not the Jews' portion can be nullified is it, when a Jew worships an idol, God forbid. If, if God forbid such a thing would happen, under whose opinion is he following? Is he following his own opinion, meaning that he's doing it out of his own volition and his own invention, perhaps? and Or is he just trying to mimic the Gentile? And it seems that he's saying that he's doing it of his own volition, and sometimes he do see such a thing that Jews become more, God forbid, when they leave authentic Judaism and they go into some cult, they will often become bigger fanatics than their Gentile counterparts. And so therefore, even if, according to this Bryson, it seems like that's the Psaac, because that's how we end off here, that even if the Jew and the Gentile have a share and an idol. The share cannot be nullified. Only the Gentile share is nullified, and the Jew's share remains prohibited. Um, we have a new Mishnah. The Mishnah asks, how does a Gentile nullify an idol? Does he, have, does he just declare it to be nullified, or does he have to perform an act? So it seems that from the beginning of the Mishnah that he has to perform an act that actually damages the idol. And that's how this Mishnah learns. And even if he insults the idol, it does not nullify the idol. It's only if he removes a portion of the idol to show his contempt for the idol. He defaces the idol in a permanent way. So, for example, if you have... Um, a, a, an idol that's a form of a a person, let's say. It says, Kata Rish Asna, Rish Chaitma, Rish Etzba. If he cuts off the tip of 
the ear of the idol, or the tip of the nose of the idol, or the tip of the finger of the idol, he nullifies the idol. And then the rest of the idol, the whole idol, even the portion that's removed, it would seem, becomes permitted for use because it's no longer an object of worship. Similarly, if someone hits it with a, a hammer until it damages the face of the idol, it defaces the idol in some way, even though, let's say, it's it gets bent in, so no actual portion of the idol is removed, but it is defaced... Uh. It's say it's pushed in. So there's an actual physical change to the item. Betla. Uh, so then it's it's nullified. Rakak bifaneha hishten lefaneha grara zaraklas setsaya harizu ena betela. However, if someone spits in front of the idol, urinates in front of the idol, drags it in the in the dirt or throws excrement at it, it does not become nullified just by that act, because even though... It could, what's the reason for that? What's what's the difference? So, um, we it seems from the Ritva and the Ma'iri and others, that the reason for this is that it could be repaired after. You can, it, 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 let's say... The pagan is momentarily angry at the idol, and so he insults the idol, but he doesn't actually deface the idol. So for the time, perhaps it's not no longer an object of worship. However, someone else could come along and clean it up, or even the person himself who committed this insult against the idol could also clean it up and go back to, God forbid, worshipping it. And so therefore, the only way to say that an idol is actually nullified is to actually deface it in a way that affects the actual form of the idol. Mechra <coughs> Mishkana. What if the pagan sells his idol or leaves it as a uh, as, as a um, collateral for a loan? Rebbe Amir Bittel Loi so Rebbe says that it nullifies the idol because it shows he has contempt for it. He he doesn't play, he doesn't have any desire to worship it anymore. He doesn't hold it as an object of worship. However, the sages say that since it has no actual change to the item, it does not nullify it. So the Gemara says. Uh, start, so the Gemara is going to discuss all of these issues that we have here in the Mishnah. So the first question is this where it says, Paksa, that if you hit it with a hammer, it doesn't actually remove, it doesn't chip off any part of the idol, however, it, it does deface the idol in some way. Uh, so the Gemara asks, if you didn't remove any part, part of the idol, how did you nullify it? Amar bizeir shepachsa b'fanah. The answer is, is that you hit it in the face. You actually, as we as we mentioned, as we explained, that you actually change the form of the idol. It, it even though, like let's say, it indents the form of the idol and doesn't. So making the dent, even if it doesn't actually uh, remove any part of the idol. Uh, that's sufficient to nullify it. But what about spitting in front of it or urinating in front of it? That does not nullify it. What are we talking about here? Um, Um, So uh, Isaiah 8 says that they passed over at a difficult time of famine. And this was that when he was hungry and angry and he cursed his king and his God, which was an idol, 
and he turned to heaven. So we see at that point, the uh, so meaning he turned to the true God. The, the um, but afterwards it's written Vel Eretz Yabit Vihinate Sara Vachashikh and the Ayf Tsukov a filmanada. However, then he turns toward the land and he looks and he sees trouble and darkness and and uh, and, and all kinds of you know pain and, and darkness that's coming on him. The explanation of this biblical verse is that even though this p- pagan cursed his king and his God, and he turned to heaven, he turned his, his heart to God, however he can, to, to, he turned upward, then he could, he could turn back down to earth, meaning after he, over, he, he gets over his anger, he's going to return back to his improper ways, that was his, uh, his habit. So that's why if someone commits an insult to an idol that doesn't actually damage the idol, it doesn't nullify the idol. Mishnah continues, Machar Mashkana, Rebbe Amibitl Bechamimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimim
and the Divri Chavera, that's what Rebbe says, it's nullified when it's being sold. Divri Chavera Shemach Lo'evda. But the sages, when they say it's not nullified, it's because he's selling it to be worshipped. Obviously, if he's, you know, he's Terach, who has a, uh, who has a, an idol shop, and he's selling the idol, that doesn't nullify the idol. Because he's selling it to be worshipped, and so there's no, really no machlokus between Rebbe and the Chachamim. So what does it mean? What, just, let's just define our words. Even though they might seem to be obvious, we can still we should still have clear definitions of what we're talking about. So what does it mean to damage the idol, and what does it mean to to worship the idol? Now, maybe we're saying the simple meanings. If you're damaging it. You're, you're damaging. You're destroying it. If you're worshiping, it's to be worshipped. These these words don't need to be defined. We already know what they mean. My time in the mandama bittel. Question is, if he's selling it, if we saying it's always, let let's assume that the Mishnah is actually talking about something that's always the same. If he's saying that it's being sold to be worshipped, how can Rebbe say? That it's nullified, it can't be nullified, it's being sold to be worshipped. So my time in the Manda Amalai Bittal. And if it's being sold to be destroyed, why would the sages say that it's not nullified? If it's obvious that the when he's giving it away, he's is at, 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 you know, essentially he's delivering this item to be nullified, to be to be destroyed, he it, He's giving it to the other person with the making him a shliach and, and nullifying it if, if there's some physical deed that has to be done to be nullifying it. So now we get into the hair splitting issues that the Talmud is famous for. That when he's saying he's selling it to be destroyed, does it mean it, it doesn't mean that he's directly destroying it, but rather that the one he's selling to is going to destroy it because he knows this person's Jewish. He doesn't care about the idol. Uh, meaning the 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 Gentile is selling it maybe because he's desperate, but he still holds the idol to be an object of worship. Uh, but he needs the money, and so he's selling his idol. However, in his heart. He still has worship for the idol. And we remember we said that only a Gentile can nullify an idol, a Jew cannot. So now he's selling this to the Jew. And the idol is now the property of the Jew. And it hasn't been nullified yet before it comes into the Jew's domain. And so now the Jew is not allowed to melt it down and use it because it hasn't been nullified yet. Or is it already nullified by virtue of the fact that the Gentile is selling to the Jew and he knows that it's going to be destroyed? And is that sufficient to nullify the idol? Or do you have to ask the Gentile to do some insult to the idol before it's purchased, perhaps? And that will nullify it, and then the Jew is allowed to take the, let's say, the gold that it's made out of. I know it sounds kind of like an anti-Semitic meme, a Jew melting down gold and something like that, but uh, it, it could be any item. It could be wood, could be anything you want. You know, so just saying gold, just because you know, it, it 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 makes sense. You know, the whole story, and 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 the 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 issue would be again that the Gentile would not be allowed to. Um, the Jew would not be allowed to buy this idol from the Gentile, even for the sake of destroying it. It would, would seem that he, the way it could be done, uh, if we're saying it's not uh, like the Chachamim, that it's not nullified, is he could have, a, if that Gentile doesn't want to nullify it, he could have another Gentile agent purchase for him, and that Gentile agent would nullify the idol by, as we said, you know, cutting off a little piece of the nose or something. And then the Jew could buy it from that agent, 
and and then make use of the uh, materials. Um, that's really what we're discussing here. Um, And, and when we're saying about worship, it's someone who, who's going to worship it. Let's say, let's say he sells it to a Gentile uh, goldsmith who's of a different religion. So this Gentile, maybe he doesn't worship this idol, but he worships a different idol. So he's going to take this idol, melt it down for gold, and make a new idol out of it, the one that he worships. And... Uh, and so, therefore, the question is, is, is the gold temporarily nullified until it's formed into a new idol or not? Or, or, you know. so, so we see that it doesn't matter which way we're learning the Mishnah, it's still a disagreement. Like, no, so that's not how we learn this. I sell a hachi, I'm a Rebbe. <coughs> Rather, this is how Rebbe teaches it. Niran divrei chavere k'shemach lechabla. Umanu tzaref Yisrael. She'af chavere l'nechach alai l'kshemach la'evda ava lechabla moiduli. So, no, this is not how we're saying. Rebbe is saying... That they're uh, how Rebbe learns it is it that it's enough to have a mental nullification of the idol. The only reason why we're saying that an idol is certainly the first part of the Mishnah that says that the that the idol is nullified if you break off a piece of it and it's not nullified if you throw dirt on it. The reason we're saying that is because uh, we know for sure that the idol was nullified in the heart if, in the heart of the worshiper, of the former worshiper, if he insults it to the point where it's actually destroyed. But if he insults it to a point where it's not actually destroyed, there, it's possible that he did nullify it already. We don't know for sure because he might repent of his, of his good deed of destroying the idol, of insulting the idol, he should be insulting the idol. He might regret his insult and return back to his idol until he actually insults it by actually damaging it. But the damage is not 100% necessary. And so therefore, the, by virtue of the fact, Meaning that even if the, the Gentile did not actually damage the idol, the fact that he's selling it to a Jew shows that he has nullified the idol in his heart, and no, therefore the Jew is allowed to purchase it without any agent. He can purchase it directly because it's already been nullified. And therefore... Um, he can, you know, destroy it and use the materials for some other permitted use. Uh, however, if it's sold to a Gentile, so so the wait a second. Let's go back to the Mishnah. Yeah, Rabbi says it is bottle, so let me try to understand this. Oh, well, okay, now I get it. So what Rabbi is saying is that the sages agree with him if he's selling it to a Jewish goldsmith. That uh, his friends agree, his colleagues agree, that it, it's, it's, they will not say it's not nullified. It is nullified. That's what he's saying here. But when he sells it to be worshipped, uh, 
by a Gentile, then uh, it, 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 it's obviously Rabbi also agrees that it's not nullified, and but if it's sold to be destroyed, they agree. Uh, Mace face. So the Gemara is arguing about what this means. Halokeach grutos mina akum matzben akum im actually nasan maus mashach yachzir imish nasan maus mashach yeluch liyama melach. What if a Jew goes? to a shop to buy pieces of silver from a Gentile. And he finds just a box of silver pieces, and among the silver pieces he finds an idol. Now, if he didn't give the money yet to the Gentile seller, he already... performed the Kenyan of Mashiach. He he acquired it by dragging it. Yeah, sir, he can still give it back to the Gentile and ask him to nullify it because he hasn't purchased it yet, even though he acquired it in a certain sense, he hasn't purchased it yet. So he can give it back to the Gentile and say, um, this piece, this is an idol. So if you did not nullify the idol, I cannot have it. So if you want me to buy this, you have to nullify it before you sell it to me. Um, on the floor, over there. So, um, pick it up. Abraham, pick it up. But if he already gave the money and he took it, and then uh, then he has to uh, throw this idol into the Dead Sea because it's too late for him to nullify it. So if you're saying that there's a disagreement when it comes to a Jewish goldsmith, who Bryce, uh, who whose opinion would this Bryce follow? Rabban and he? So that would be like the rabbis, because they say it's not nullified, and he has to ask it to be nullified. Just selling it does not nullify it. If you're saying it's a disagreement with a Gentile goldsmith, or a silversmith in this case, I would serve still the vehicle, but if everyone says with a Jewish uh, goldsmith, silversmith, it's nullified, this is a difficult situation here, because no, he sold it, and he still, uh, before the transaction can be completed, the Jew has to ask the Gentile to nullify the idol. So how many so his opinions is shiny, awesome, the diet the grutoy is sovereign. So the, this price is slightly different than our Mishnah, because He's not intending to buy an idol. It just happened. He's just buying random pieces of silver. Perhaps it's from a recycling plant. Let's say, you know, the, you have metal recyclers. You, you know, today, you know, you bring metal to be recycled, and and uh, he doesn't know what's in all. The, he just knows it's all silver, right? So he takes it. And, and then he finds there, he, he has no intention of it, of, uh, he didn't even know there's an idol in the box, right? He just has a box of silver pieces, of all kinds of random silver pieces. Some could be coins, some could be tools, some could be jewelry, and some are idols. And he didn't know that there were even idols in there. He didn't even know what's in there. A die to the Akam oven. So he's selling it because he wants recycled silver and not for idolatry. And yet still... He didn't even know he had idolatry, and that's why he didn't nullify it. Meaning, if the item... And so that's why he has to ask the Gentile to nullify the idol. And the Gentile can probably nullify the idol verbally or mentally without actually damaging it. Meaning it remains an idol until it was actually nullified. Um, 
and the, the, the question here is, does an actual physical action have to be done to nullify it? And that's what really is the, the crux of this whole argument here, of this whole discussion. I don't know. So, um, so since he was unaware that there was an idol in the... If he knew he was selling an idol... So he knows he's selling an idol to a Jew who's going to destroy it. That already nullifies it. But he's just selling silver pieces. He doesn't know there's an idol in there. He, he, someone has to nullify that idol. And we don't know if that idol was nullified yet before it came into the hands of this, uh, of this recycling uh, agent. This recycler, I guess we'll call it. Um, is that olive oil empty? Okay, but it looks like somebody poured out a bunch of it, no? Or it's just used for candles. I don't know, we'll see. But it, it, so since he had no intention, he, he was unaware that it was an idol, there has to be an active nullification of the idolatry. Tanner Abundant. Rabbis taught, I should not allow my pilots. I should not allow my pilots. I should not allow my pilots. Uh, the rabbis taught if a, a Gentile leaves uh, an idol as a collateral for a loan, or and then once he pays the the loan back, he's going to get the idol back, right? Or uh, a, a ruin fell on it, and so he's not he, he's not going to get it out of there. Or someone, uh, robbers, thieves, stole the idol and he's not running after it. Or if the owners of the idol just left, went to another country, let's say they just abandoned their house and went away somewhere far away. Um... So, uh, if they're going to return like the wars of Joshua is never nullified with Sricha. And, and, you know, if they're going to return, it's not nullified. And if they not playing return, it is nullified with Sricha. So we have to discuss what this means. The Tana Leva Leha. If the loan was against this. Mashkain, this this collateral. Midloy Zabna Loy Batla. Since he didn't sell it, he didn't uh, nullify it. Avul Nafla Ma Pilus Malikama Nile Aima Batula Batla Srik Srika. However, if a, a ruin fell on it and he's not gonna rescue it, maybe that should be nullified and so that's why the Price has to tell us it's nullified. But if it fell on a, a ruin, the wow. This is from Kid City. Okay. So I'm calling it Kid so if he, uh, when he wants to get it back, he can just dig it up, and that's a safe place to leave it. She come away. No one's going to take it. least and But the thieves stole it. He, he's not going after them. So then that should be nullified. So that's why you need both. Even if the thieves stole it, it's not nullified. Now, if you just taught the law of the thieves... Because if you thought if a, if a Gentile stole it, he'll worship it. If the Jew stole it, 
since it's uh, expensive, it's made of gold, he's going to sell it to the gent, or it's, it, 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 or even, even it's not gold, it's valuable to the Gentile. The Jew maybe doesn't care that much about the law. He's not going to worship the idol, but he, he, he wants to make money. He, maybe he's, he's greedy, and he doesn't care about the Jewish law that says he's not allowed to benefit from the idol, so he's going to, obviously he doesn't care about law if he steals it. He's a thief already. That's much worse, right? Than selling it, um, you know, even if without worshiping it, worshiping it would be worse than stealing it. But stealing it is worse than um, selling it. So he's obviously not such a pious person, you know. It's like the whole argument with the gun control, you know. Like, yeah, laws are going to stop criminals from <laughs> using guns illegally. Well, they're already they already don't care about killing people. Are they going to care about some law that, you know, I mean, we see, to, uh, they said on the radio, who has, you know, for, for you know, 80 years, uh, machine guns have been illegal, but the mafia still has machine guns, and the, and the drug dealers still have machine guns. It doesn't stop them from having them. So, so too, this, this Jew doesn't have any qualms about theft, so he's already a bad guy. Um... So uh, even if he's not going to worship the idol, he'll sell it because it's it's valuable. It probably has maybe even more valuable as the idol than it does for its actual gold value. So then he wants the money, right? That's why he's stealing. So um, and then um, and then the, the gentile he sells it to will worship it. So that's why it's not nullified. Well, the Yichua Baal Mochel needs a yam, but the Shachal of a Dayu. It's a little bit tilt But if they going overseas, and they probably never coming back, and they didn't take the idol with them, it shows they don't care about it. Should be nullified. Um, they maybe just abandon their house, but no, we still say no. It, it, it's not nullified just by virtue of the fact that they left it. And. Uh, you know, if somehow it came into possession of someone else, it would have to be nullified before it could be used. So, yeah, I remember it. It was from a movie called War of the Gargantuas. You want to watch that? It's on Filmstruck. Yeah. If it's going to return like the wars of Joshua, it's not nullified. So what does this mean? What is it talking about? The Amorites never came back after Joshua's wars. What are we talking about here? What? So what the, what the Bryce is saying, and how this is how we're going to explain it. If they're going to return, then it's like the wars of Joshua, and it has no um, no nullification. Meaning, Deuteronomy thirteen, it says, nothing from the idols should stay in your hands. Meaning, when when Joshua fought his wars, all the idols that he found had to be. Destroyed could not be melted down and used. You couldn't use the gold for something else. You just had to, you know, bury it or something. It's, it's, it, it, incidentally, <coughs> you know, people wonder why do we find in the Holy Land the archaeologists find Canaanite idols, and that's the answer because they were not allowed to melt them down, not allowed to break them down, and use the. Uh, Use the idols for something else. They just had to bury them, throw them out. They couldn't use them. So, So, the Gemara is asking, so if that's what it means, that anything that, just like the idols that were found when Joshua conquered the Holy Land, they could not be nullified, so to this, why do we have to mention this whole story about Joshua and everything? What does that have to do with anything? So it's just incidentally saying so. 
It's like Rav Yehuda said in the name of Rav that if a Jew sets up a brick with an intent to worship it but doesn't have a chance to worship it and before he has a chance to worship it or maybe decides not to but before he takes it down and before he has a chance to worship it the Gentile worships it it becomes prohibited. Manal and the Asra. Yeah. Okay. So where do we derive that it is prohibited? Amr Belaza Tchilta Shal Eretz Israel. It's like the beginning of when the Jews entered the Holy Land. Amr Achmona. Because God said, Vashreim Tusrifun Be'esh. Deuteronomy 12, it says you should burn their idolatrous trees with fire. Make the Yerusha Hilahem. Me'avasehem. Now, why did they have to destroy these trees rather than... Why couldn't they just... I don't know. Why couldn't they just nullify the idols, have the Gentiles nullify the idols, or say that it's going to be nullified because they're being taken away from them? The answer is that the Holy Land is an inheritance from their ancestors, the ancestral inheritance from Abraham. So why can't we say that the all the trees in the Holy Land belong to Abraham, and the fact that the Canaanites um, worship the trees it, it, it has no effect because you're not allowed if, if someone goes and worships one of my possessions it doesn't become nullified it doesn't become prohibited just because because it didn't belong to him he had no right to worship it so so too can't we say that the Canaanites had no right to worship anything that was connected to the Holy Land such as trees because those all belong to Abraham and the and the the Canaanites had no legal rights to <coughs> to these trees in order, including no legal rights to not, to worship them, and so therefore it shouldn't become prohibited. So maybe these trees were worshipped before Abraham was given the Holy Land by God. Still, it should be enough for them to nullify it. Ella midafalchu Yisrael the eagle, galadai to the nichelahu ba'akum. So what the sages say here is something very sad, that once the Jews worshipped the golden calf, it showed that they don't have any problem with idolatry. Vichi asu akum, shlichusa did hu avde. So therefore. <clears throat> when the Canaanites, the Amorites, worshipped trees in the Holy Land that belonged to the children of Abraham, it shows that they did so with permission from them. Chinami Yisrael Shazokaf Levena Galadati Nichalei Laakum Chiyosa Akum Folach Lashlichusadi De Kavid. So too, if the Jew sets up a, 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 a brick with an intent to worship it, even if he doesn't have the chance to, and, and so it's not, it's not uh, and he didn't make an idol, it was just a brick, and he just made it stand up. <coughs> but he didn't actually change anything in the bricks, he didn't make an idol. But he set it up with an intent to worship it, and he didn't have a chance to worship it, so it wasn't prohibited until it got worshipped. And the Gentile came along and worshipped it, even though it didn't belong to him, but he did so with permission. And so therefore it does become uh, it does become prohibited to the Jew because the Gentile worshipped it with the Jew's permission. Um, wait a second, wait a second, the Gemara says. What does a, a, a calf have to do with a tree? Just because they worshipped the golden calf, let, uh, let's say it was actually an object of worship, of course that could be a whole argument in and of itself, but it seems that the simple shot is that it was an object of worship. 
So, what does that have to do with worshipping trees? So, just because they worship the calf doesn't mean that they worship the trees. So, uh, so or they are permitted the worship of trees, that they were okay with the pagans worshipping trees. They didn't have a problem with it. So, so maybe low. So, Amar Kra, Eila Elohecha Yisrael. It says that they said, these are your gods, O Israel, and not this is your god. Malamed she'ivu lelohus harbe. It shows that uh, when they worshipped the golden calf, they had a lust for polytheism and for many, many gods, including the Asherah. Eima kold v'hadei egel nistru, m'kan ve'lech nistre, man morchach. But maybe we only say that those Asheros that were there at the moment that the golden calf was worshipped, those are the ones that are prohibited. But those, but then the, the Jews repented of their sin. So any trees that were planted subsequently should be permitted. But the answer to the Gemara is, who, how can you prove when the tree was was planted or not, so therefore to be on the safe side all of the, the Torah prohibits all of the trees a new Mishnah Ovedes Kochavim Shnichua Ovdeha Bishash Sholem Meteris Bishash Mulcham Asura If a pagan, is, uh, let's, uh, in this case it seems a, a woman, is running away and leaves her um, Hello? Hello? Hello?